Hey guys, this is Techo Freak here, and welcome back to episode 3 of my Let's CS custom story creation tutorial for Amnesia. So, um, we're here at our uh, uh, custom story that we created and set up. Um, there's nothing in it right now, but some basic um, items that you need to start your map. So, here we have um, a basic image file. We have our extra English, which will uh, say some stuff for us when the map starts. Uh, our custom story settings, our sounds, music, maps. So, in maps, this is what I have, just in case you don't have that. On uh, music, I don't have any music in here yet. And here we have some sounds. So, um, uh, this is uh, basically what we're at right now. And... Um, and now we're actually going to get into the into part of the fun part, which is our uh, level editing. So basically, this is creating the map that the player will see in the actual story, in the actual custom story. So we're going to start off by going to um, our root directory where Amnesia is installed. Um, this is going to be in my local disk, Program Files x86, Amnesia: The Dark Descent. And since I purchased it through CD, I will have a Redis folder. Uh, you might got you guys might have a different directory if you did it with um Steam, so uh, I'm sure you guys can find that directory and it shouldn't be too difficult. So in our Redis folder, we will open up. So th just find your way to this main folder with all our um folders and the root amnesia files. Um, if we scroll down, we will find the level editor we installed in the first episode. So um, we're going to go ahead and right click that and we're going to run as administrator. We're going to run as administrator just because um, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the file doesn't get saved properly because of some permissions issues. It's happened to me before and I don't want it to happen to you guys when you guys are learning. So um, make sure you run everything as administrator. I think I said this for the past two episodes so please do it if you don't want any problems and so I don't get any comment spam about things not working just uh, listen to me and run as administrator and um, if you get further into um, into doing your own stories then you can start messing around that or with that by yourself so uh, here we are with our basic interface um, these are the uh, main boxes that you may be working on that you may um be doing most of your map making on um but most of it will be happening in this box over here so let me just give um the quick uh explanation of all of this so um first uh there's the file in file you can uh you know save the map file open a map file import objects and um export anything you have inside here so um this is basically for saving and for um and that kind of stuff and here we'll, we have some basic um editing options so there's like undo redo delete duplicate but we will be using uh these hotkeys i'll tell you guys how to use these hotkeys because that's the ones that i use the most because i hate going up here to duplicate or to do stuff like that and also other than that we can um also uh, browse i mean um uh you change level settings for some other things but we'll get into that much later so um, now let's start with these uh, different types of views. There is a front view, a right view, and a top view, and the main one being this pers perspective view. So um, perspective is what basically the player sees. The player sees um, uh, all these items through, the through what you would see in perspective. Uh, so this is like you were an actual player looking in your map. So next, there's the front view, right view, and top view, and these are pretty self-explanatory. You can view your map through different angles, and um, and this is mainly used for some precision. So if you want to precisionly place some items, you can do it through um, using these guys right here. And the uh, perspective will let you uh, see the objects just um, like that. So for better measurements, you should use this. But this is where we will be doing most of our map making, so there's no need to worry. Um, so uh, I'm sure you guys noticed that this is very um, annoying to work with if there's the screen is so tiny and as you can as if you haven't noticed already you can't maximize this this is just the way that the program was developed you're you're not allowed to expand this this is about as big as the um, uh, GUI kind of gets um, but don't worry guys because if you hover above the um, view that you want to see uh, bigger uh, and you see these red borders around, uh, you can hit spacebar, and boom, you'll get a full-size screen. So this is awesome for um, uh, for getting a better view of what's in your map. So um, now let's talk about movement controls. So the movement controls are pretty basic, but if you haven't uh, worked with uh, 
level creation programs like a uh, hammer or with um, other types of programs like that like unity and stuff like that then you might find these controls a little weird but it actually isn't that bad after you get used to it because I know after when I started um, it was a little weird to me and it was hard to move things around just because I wasn't used to moving around but uh, and now it kind of just feels natural so hopefully it'll be the same for you guys so let's start with basic controls uh, scrolling uh, forward is zoom scrolling out is zoom out if you hold alt and left click you can look around the map so you can look around at different angles from under from top from left to right and next is the middle click so if you hold alt and you middle click you can move the little um this little uh, ball in the middle and this is basically what your camera your perspective view revolves around so you get to move around the map basically and then you get to turn and get a little bit more precision there and uh, if you um, hold alt and you right click you kind of just get like a bit more like precision kind of zooming um, but uh, I mean anything that that can do you can also do by scrolling so that's no big deal there and um, uh, yeah so I think that's about it for movement controls um, uh, now let's talk about these tools on the left side so the first tool is the select tool which we are defaultly on already which lets you select items in the map and you can also move around the map but you can also do that with uh, other types of tools so um, the main thing with select tool lets you move around the items and it gives you these options over here to select more than one item using multi select and also there's a translate so this is to move the object rotate to rotate the object and expand uh, scale which expands the items and uh, makes it bigger and stretches them out kind of uh, uh, destroying the texture a little but um, you know it may be useful in some occasions um, so we'll be getting into that on uh, this episode so don't worry too much about these uh, next will be lights uh, that's number two in the list and um, there's different types of lights box light lets you create a box on the map you can create this by clicking down oops uh, uh, you can hit control Z to uh, undo that you can uh, click down and hold and then stretch out a square and then if you let go of that it will, the square will still be there because you can select a, a height um, by just um, going up and down and you can create a box light so it's literally a box so you can select this like uh, with the select tool and you can uh, this is where the controls come into action uh, left uh, I, I mean there's uh, the x-axis the uh, z-axis and then there's the y-axis so um, that's pretty helpful and uh, there's rotate so you can rotate this um, box I don't think you can see it with this but you will see it with other items pretty soon and then there's a uh, scale so you can make this box bigger instead of having to do it um, just uh, when you actually create the item so that's pretty helpful and uh, one of the quick shortcuts to, to uh, delete items will be to just hit the delete button on your keyboard and that gets rid of the item so um, the other type of lights there's a point light this is a light with a radius so if you um, go back to select tool you can lift it up you can see that there's a radius of light that will be emitting from it right now you won't be able to tell I don't think you'll be able to tell much of the, um, the light but we will pretty soon in the next episode when we actually create our room with light and all of that so um, uh, you can move around this like anything else you cannot expand this um, to actually expand this size this circle um, shape there is a radius in point and this lets you change it for example if I change this to 3 boom it gets a lot bigger so um, this is more for realistic effects um, for uh, lights and stuff like that but we will be getting into that very soon so don't stress um, any of these guys yet we will ex be explaining these pretty soon alright so um, if we go back to lights there's one more type of light and that is a spotlight a spotlight when placed down and lifted up you can see that it looks kind of like spotlight so and if you're in the theater and you I'm sure you've um, seen this in any way um, a spotlight is always like a light just concentrating into one area this is basically what a spotlight is in amnesia you can make a certain um, uh, you can make the light just uh, go in a certain area that you want to highlight and you can expand this um, by changing some of the options here so like the field of view can change it to like a hundred and this will make it a lot wider and then you can change the radius 
make it a lot bigger and then the aspect and all that kind of cool stuff um so we'll be getting into those as well so don't worry too much if you don't um if you don't know what these do yet so we'll get to it eventually uh so that's it for lights let's hold the types of lights next we'll be doing billboards billboards are mainly used for light streaks so um in reality when like light comes through a window and the house is like really dark the light is so um is so intense um is so intense compared to the darkness in the room and you see these light streaks coming in and maybe you might have seen it yourself too if you look very closely at your window i'm sure everybody has um you see like streaks of light coming through your window well billboards are kind of that that's mainly what it's used for and it has other uses as well but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So in materials, and you hit dot 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 means browse. So um, with this, you can browse, and you can find right here in billboards. This takes you to your main but directory, by the way. Your main directory, which mine's is the Redis. Uh, yours might be different based on um, um, where uh, where you got the game. Um, so it doesn't matter. It should automatically take you to this place. Um, and billboards, you can see the type of billboards. They're rays of light kind of like what I was saying and um, um, uh, sometimes they're used for other things for example I have this um, other custom story and yeah they have some pretty goofy billboards in their um, in their collection and these actually make a billboard that look just like this so you know it's a good way of getting pictures in there and stuff like that and also they've used it as like streaks the same they've used I've seen them use it as like streaks as well so it's pretty cool but they're mainly used for better um, uh, quality and map designs. So um, if we go ahead and we click on one of these, we can uh, see what it actually does. So um, first, we're gonna have to click somewhere. Um, when after you select the one, and you can see that it created this weird light kind of looking thing. And if you click on it and move it up, you can see that if you look around, it's kind of just like a transparent kind of um, light kind of floating there it has no uh, actual uh, um, illuminance to it there's no light that emits from it it is just a texture floating in the air that looks kind of cool and uh, are very uh, uh, put implemented in high quality maps so um, uh, yeah so we'll be getting to those when we create windows and stuff like that which won't be too long from now so let's go ahead and move on um, for now we will leave that Next is particle systems. Um, so uh, particles can mean basically anything, any type of particles. So this could go from blood to dust to um, just basically uh, fog, but fog uh, with a um, with like a shape or a moving moving fog. Um, but it, I've seen it mainly used for um, the dust. For example, these light streaks. I'm sure you've seen it in reality where uh, light comes into your window. And when the light is intense enough, you can actually see the dust particles flying around the air. Well, you can kind of do the same thing with this. If you browse and you go under um, particles, you can see all the types of particles. So you can see there's like fog, there's blood. And uh, the one I'm looking for is uh, dust. So you can see dust falling. You can see, um, and you can see other types of uh, things for uh, different events that can happen in your map. Um, but, uh, for example, uh, particle systems would be used where there's light, and you can see the dust particles come in for added realism to the map, but it really has no interaction um, implemented into it. So, that's about it. Um, moving on to number five is sounds. You can select sound fires, uh, fi files and implement them right into your um, map, and they will play um, directly from your map. But I find this uh, this method to be a little bit um, I don't know I find it to be kind of null or like pointless because um, uh, you can do this in uh, the scripts and it's a lot easier to doing in in a script in my opinion just because I like kind of scripting and everything is there in that in that script so um, we'll be doing uh, sounds through a, a script so we won't really be using this. Um, but don't worry too much. Uh, we'll get we'll get into it, and you'll see how much easier it is. So now we're moving into static objects. Um, static objects are objects that the player doesn't necessarily interact with. They're kind of there for um, visuals and to create a boundary for the player. So um, uh, a boundary or a platform for the player. So um, if we go in here, you can see um these weird names. This is the way that and um, amnesia names their the well the creators of amnesia name their um uh, textures 
um, there's like uh, um, assortments for textures. There's like um, a castle base. So castle base is the base textures for um, castles, for cellars, for dungeons, for mansions. Um, murky castle base. But w right now, um, I'm just going to show you guys real quick uh, the mansion base. If we scroll down, uh, we can see different type of things like ceilings, specials, stairs, and uh, walls. And if we go to walls, you can see that this is um, uh, one of the walls I'm sure you guys have seen before. Um, and this is called the Fall Alt 2. And um, if we place this guy down, facing us, you can see that that's the actual texture for the wall. And um, and if the player were to try and run into this, they wouldn't be able to go past it. So, in general, static objects uh, um, what will, are just the items that are kind of there for boundaries and stuff like that. Um, the ones that they interact with are called entities, which will be coming right now. So the number seven is entities. Entities are um, actual interactable items in um, Amnesia, and the player can interact with these items. Hey guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, just started the recording again. Let me go ahead and minimize this thing. All right. So um, I believe we're in um, entities. So um, in entities, there. Um, are the items that the player can actually interact with and um, grab, like uh, grab and actually take into their inventory. So if we look down here, you can see different ty types of things like bottles. There's characters like uh, corpses and stuff like that. And also, if we go down into um, item, you can see the items that the um, player can actually take in and actually put in their inventory. So if you go ahead and go down these guys, you can see all the types of items that are in here, which is uh, pretty good. So that's pretty good. Um, so um, uh, that's about it for entities. We'll be using these pretty often and doing some cool stuff with that. So, moving on, uh, we're looking into areas now. Uh, areas. Uh, I don't want to get too in depth into these because these are going to be interactable with our um, scripts when we start writing script for the uh, am for amnesia. But um, uh, basically, these are area types that when the player steps in, something will happen. Usually, the event that will take place is defined by the scripts that you will write. For example, a script, this is a script area. A script area, you can literally do a bunch of things. Play sounds, have events occur, spawn a monster. Uh, you can change it into a ladder area where the player can climb like a ladder instead of using this ladder area over here. But you can still do it the same way. Um, and yeah, that's about uh, the basics for uh, this, but we'll get into these guys, so don't worry too much. Um, and player start is about the first one we'll be, get, we'll be getting into, because this is where the player will actually spawn. So, Alright, moving on is next, um, primitives. Primitives will use to make a plane. Ah, uh, go away. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyways, um... Uh, uh, primitives are, are a plane. You can create a large plane using this and put a texture on it. This is how we will create our, um, this is the, uh, I guess you can say the amateur way of creating floors and ceilings. Because uh, people start getting to more creative ways to make ceilings and, um, and stuff like that. Um, other than planes. But planes will be the basics for making an actual room. This is how I like to make my rooms because I like to think, keep things simple. But when we do get into more advanced map making, um, we will actually get more into uh, making our map look very fancy. So if we look into the um, materials, if you go to where there's a static object, um, which is uh, things that players don't interact with, you can go into like mansion base and select uh, floors or ceilings. Um, and you can actually make a big plane of this. So if you want to make a big ceiling, you would use these guys to create your ceiling. And uh, yeah, so uh, right now um, we're not, we're gonna we're gonna do that t um, today in this episode um, to and show you guys how to make that room. But first, let's finish going through this. So next is uh, decals. Uh, decals can be used to make um, uh, decorations in the map. Um, they're mo they're mainly used for if I had the browse button blood. Um, this lets you create, um, like, you know, blood streaks and blood splats all over the wall and kind of like that. Um, this is better than using, like, entities because you could find these same textures in, um, in the, uh, entities. 
uh, and the end uh, I'm not sure if the entities are static I think I believe it's static since it's something that the player doesn't necessarily interact with but if you do you'll have to constantly be copying and pasting until you get like that streak with decals you can just go ahead and make a streak on the floor and uh, it's uh, very simple and a lot easier than the other way so that's uh, mainly what decals are used for creating those kind of decorations next is uh, fog areas um, fog areas lets you create basically fog I guess it's pretty uh, simple if you click and put it down anywhere you'll see like little clouds and if you click on those clouds and bring it up you can uh, expand it using the scale tool and you can uh, make it higher and uh, stretch it and stuff and when the player enters this area they will be overcome by fog um, and over here you can see that you can uh, change uh, the settings for the intensity of the fog so after a certain distance the fog will get thicker and thicker so you can change these guys to do that and um, yeah and uh, we'll get into that um, sometime in the near future and that will be pretty good so let's go ahead and delete this guy and uh, move on to the next um, part of the of the um, line here which is com combine um, damn it this thing is bothering me very much lately. Um, so combine, I've never really used it. I assume it's like uh, to combine two items and like I guess stick them together. But I can't be sure on that one because I've never necessarily used it. Um, if I do end up using it, I will probably show you guys. But I've made plenty of um, maps without using this tool, so I'm not. I'm sure that's not too much of a big deal. But it might end up uh, giving us some more flexibility sometime in the near future. So don't worry too much about combine. Um, or combine. I, I'm probably saying it wrong. Uh, we'll get into it um, when I get the chance to figure out what you can actually do with it. And if there's practical ju uses for it, uh, I will show you guys um, how to use that. So uh, finally, we're going to um, uh, end up ending with this uh, part down here. Um, so we're going to start off with grid, grid controls. Um, so uh, right here in the first one, the XZ, as you can see, the plane is um, on the X and Z axis. As you can see here, it says X and Z, but you can also change where the grid is. So if you want the grid to be in a different place, so if you click it, now the um, grid is going to be on the X and Y. So this is the X and that's the Y. Uh, the, oh, so it looks like the X happens to be the red one, not the blue one. The blue one uh, is uh, the Z axis. So if I said that wrong, I'm not sure if I did. If I said that wrong, now you know. Um, red is the X axis. So this just kind of looks like a graph, if you can see it. And you, this lets you go up and down, this uh, theoretical graph. Um, and then you can also change uh, to the YZ. So instead of the red to green, you can also change to Y and, and Z. And then you can go one more time to get back to your normal X and Z. Um, and this is where we kind of want it to stay. I don't often use that other one. Um, so um, if there there is a reason to use it, I will show you guys why you need to use it. Um, moving on is the grid snapping. So as you can see, there is um, these little squares at the bottom. And when you move an item, uh, the item moves according to the grid. So it doesn't just like, you know, cut halfway or cut in between this area. It jumps right to this line. And it keeps everything a little organized. And, you know, it prevents any um, inconsistencies with your map. So um, this is good because this is kind of what we want right now. Um, uh, next, uh, along with uh, the uh, grid snapping, there's uh, the size of the grid snapping. So basically this is the size of the square. So this square is technically 0.25 by 0.25. I'm not sure the exact measurement on that. Uh, I think maybe centimeters, but I can't be too sure on that. Um, but if you want to get more accuracy, you can always change the uh, sn uh, the snap separation or the snap size, so it snaps uh, short or with a shorter distance for more accuracy. Next is the height. So um, if you making oops, um, if you um, if you're making a um, uh, like a ladder that goes to a room under your first room, you might want to make a um, a height to go down or up because you don't want to work on a room down there um, from up here or you don't want to work on a room up there from down here because it's very very annoying to do so so the way we, we would get around that is by changing the height to the new height level and we will be getting into that when we get into stairs so don't worry too much about that for now 
And um, here, uh, this I won't be getting into these guys. I think this is the uh, about the most important part on this side. Well, this big square lets you change the views, just like you did with your space bar, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, next, there's um, A and P. Uh, this stands for atmosphere, I mean ambient light, and um, uh, global point light. So um, this basically changes all the light in the map. So if um, in the editor you always have um, the light fully lit so you can see your map because obviously I'm sure you don't want to work um, with your map while everything is dark. Um, so um, if by clicking these two you can turn uh, you can actually turn off the light that lets you you know edit. Um, this is mainly used for seeing how well the light is in your map. So um, um, if if the light is completely filling your map from the editor, you won't be able to see how the player sees the light in your map. So to actually see what they see in terms of light, you can toggle these two off, and um, and you will be able to actually see um, how dark it really is for the player, which will let you uh, you know decide on that will help you decide on how dark or bright it will actually be um, in your map. Um, and with that, that concludes uh, the whole interface on how we use it. And I think we can start on um, the actual creation of a room. So um, uh, we're going to go ahead and go to static objects. Because like I said, this is where we find our walls and stuff. And if we turn it, um, this is a ghost image of the, um, the wall that we want to put down. And I guess I'll just put it down wherever. Just get your vis just you gotta visualize the room you want to make first. I'm just gonna make a simple room. I don't want to sweat it too much. Um, and as you can see, when I put it down, it put it down backwards, and the actual texture is over here. But uh, on the on the opposite side, there is no texture. This is um, uh, if it's a 2D item. Uh, good. Uh, there's a good chance that on one side it will have uh, you know um, a texture, and the other side it will just be empty. And um, when we actually get into building rooms on the other side, we're actually going to have to do, we're going to have to rotate this so that the other side looks like it has a wall. Um, so we're actually going to have to double up on walls. So to rotate this, when it's in its ghost form like this, you just hit Q to do it one side and W to move it the other side. So if I just completely turn it this way and move it over here, I'm going to put it right um, here, I like to leave a little room between them. Um, the player won't necessarily see that because when they enter the other room, all they're going to be seeing is this. And they don't know that this little space between the wall exists. Um, so, like this, the player when the player is in the room over here, they can see this, and when they're in this room, they can see this. So, um, we're going to go ahead and delete this guy over here uh, by hitting the delete button on my keyboard to quickly delete it. And um, and uh, now we're here, and now we're actually going to make a box. I think I'm going to make a 4 by 3 I like that size. Um, and uh, if we go back to static objects, I still have my item selected. And you can just go right next to it and just place it down right there. And it will uh, join with the other texture. Uh, uh, the textures in Amnesia are combined. They're like combined textures. So they, um, well, not combined, I would say pattern textured. So, um... Uh, okay, Control Z undo something that you did. So I just did that right there. Um, so um, uh, they have textures that are, like kind of merge with the another texture similar next to it. So that's kind of helpful for um, for um, for the um, for making walls and stuff like that. So this is pretty helpful. So now I just made a line of um, walls. I just want to show you guys something real quick. If you can, you click on this and delete this one. And let's say I want to put another wall down, and you click on this one. You can duplicate this wall by hitting Control D. So now after you hit Control D, it will make a duplicate of it in the same spot the old one is in. So uh, now you just gotta move over your wall, and boom, you just create another wall and you slid it over to the other side. And it was just a duplicate of that one. And uh, I forgot to tell you guys, you gotta paste it. To paste it is Control V. So that's Control Z to undo. So if you don't know these, you can just check them right here. Control Z to undo. To redo is Control Y. To delete is delete. And you can also use backspace. And to duplicate is Control D. So um, with that, let me uh, let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and uh, make another wall here. I'm gonna turn this way, and I'm gonna go back to my static objects. And just like I showed you guys, um, rotate it like this to get it how you want it. 
Now, um, if you look at the ghost image, you want to when you put it in the corner, I recommend doing it like this, right on top of the other one right there. Uh, I think it just looks the neatest and it keeps everything kind of organized and you won't have any like holes on the wall. So this is uh, the basic structure of how a room is going to look. So let me go ahead and finish this guy up and I'll come back to you guys in a little bit. Alright guys, I am back and I created myself a uh, the room the same way I did it like this. I just repeated that. So I made a square. It took me no more than a, a minute or two. Um, but you know, I obviously have uh, good movement skills uh, with this uh, program. Uh, it might take you guys a little longer just to place the objects a little better. So uh, now, if we look uh, a little closely at these corners, you can tell that they look a little bit ugly. Um, they look like you know, like they don't merge correctly. And we're going to fix this. Um, uh, we're going to go back to our static objects, and if we search down, um, search down, uh, we're looking for a welder. A welder will weld two walls, I guess you can say, and it will make it uh, look more natural. Um, so you can use uh, different ones. There's convex and there's concave. If you put a concave over here, you can see that this is meant for um, corners. Um, and if we um, come over here and just put this like that, uh, I say you put the uh, corner piece to just be sticking in like this, and it will just cover up that um, you know nasty looking corner there. And uh, you can do this with every uh, corner that you have. And convex will do the same thing for, like, say, there's a hallway and it's going this way, and then it turns to the right. That you'll get a corner here that doesn't look right, and that's what convex is for. So um, let me give you guys an example. Um, I'll do it right over here, um, just because I don't think it's too easy to visualize. So if I put down a wall like this, and I want it to turn like the hall this way. And then, um, let me just, oh, that was a bad, uh, diagram there. Let me just undo that. Um, okay, so it's like, it's going, let's say the hall's going this way. And I want it to turn to the right. And I pull one down right there. Or maybe a little forward here. Um, nope, so we didn't get it right. Uh, right there. Okay, so as you can see, that corner looks atrocious. And that looks very bad and uh, uh, unprofessional, I guess you can say. So to fix this, it's not too bad, actually. Um, if you go to the welder and you create a, a convex, you can just uh, line this up here and put it down. And look, doesn't that look a lot better? Just uh, It just kind of merges with the, uh, with the wall there, and it creates that. So that's, uh, that's kind of what we're looking for and what we're looking to do when we're doing this. So... Um, with that, I'll delete those, and um, I'll continue doing these guys over here. So, uh, something annoying about these, uh, it, it will get frustrating to put these in every corner that you have. And um, as you can see already, uh, it's not actually fitting very nicely with this guy right here. Um, so, to do that, we can turn off grid snapping. So, now it just slides smoothly on the thing. We don't have to follow that uh, annoying grid. And as you see, we put it down, and it's looking this way. We don't we don't want that so we're gonna turn on the grid snapping real quick so that we can just turn it to the proper you know size that I want it to stay uh, looking uh, you know pretty adjacent I guess you can say and uh, now I will turn it back off so I can get the positioning I'll put it down right here and boom we got ourselves a nice corner and with this you know you can smoothly slide across and do these things so now I'm going to go to the other corner and uh, I'm just gonna uh, turn this guy over here. And I think that will be good. that's the right direction. Let me check. Nope. Uh, looks like. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's always the red, the red dot um, should always be over here um, towards that wall right there. So the red dot should always be there, and then the square should be in that area where the, you want to make the little um, corner. Um, so yeah, that that's a good way to. Oops. That's a good way to uh, visualize the thing and make it easier for you, so you don't have to keep rotating every time. So, uh, red uh, red spear there. I'll put it right there and then put it down, and boom, everything's looking pretty good now. Um, so now we're gonna get to um, making the actual floors. So um, to make the floors and the ceilings, um, uh, it's not too bad. 
Um, because if the, if the player were to spawn in here, they will see the walls, yeah, but then they would just fall right down because there's no floor and there's no ceiling. So, um, to make a floor and a ceiling is actually not so hard. So, in that, I believe I explained to you guys that, you go to, uh, primitives. And in primitives, we're going to make a plane. And, uh, we're going to go to material and select a material. And this is going to be a, um, uh, a static object because you know these are the things that the player doesn't interact but he sees um, so uh, if we go to static objects you can see all the bases I'm in mansion base and I kind of want like you know the designs to match with the room so I'm gonna go into mansion base and there's ceilings so you can see the ceilings and then there's floors so you can see the floors I'm going to use the floors and my ceiling because uh, it doesn't make too much of a difference and it still looks pretty decent I want to use the um, the boards as my ceiling and the uh, this uh, mansion base floor as my um, as my floor so um, to, we're gonna make the ceiling first for a specific reason you are going to double click it oops that was my bad there um, so you're going to click it and you're going to um, select it it's already selected and now you're going to uh, basically click and drag uh, the whole area of your room and to that you let go and boom we got ourselves uh, um, the the planks there, but we're trying to make a ceiling, not a floor. So um, what we're gonna have to do is put this guy up here, and um, to do that, we're gonna go ahead and get the select tool, and click on the floor. Now we're going to raise it up to uh, the height of the walls. Uh, usually, the way I can tell that it's uh, properly aligned is when you start seeing this weird, like you know, glitching kind of thing, because the um, the entities are interacting. I mean, the static objects are interacting, so that's good. But um, as you can see over here, we have the floorboards. But if we look under, there's nothing, because this is a 2D texture, and there it only has one side to it. So if the player were to look in here and look up, they would just see right through this, and they wouldn't see the actual texture. So we're gonna have to rotate it. That simple. We're gonna hit rotate, and we're going to hit go ahead and rotate this guy like this until that square becomes flat. Because if we look over here, you can see it's just uh, showing the whole area that it covers. So we're just going to keep rotating until that's flat. And if we look under, we can just see a flat um, plane. So if we go ahead and click on translate, and we can move this guy over right on top of the other things. Nice. Right there, just like it was before. Now if we look under, we can see our ceiling. So if the player were to be in here, they will be seeing exactly what I am seeing. All right. So now with that, we're going to make a floor. And the floor is pretty much the same deal. Uh, I already showed you guys how to do it uh, in the beginning, like uh, when I first put the ceiling. That's going to be this. So just kind of uh, click and drag across the size of your room. Some people also like to make the full, like uh, a larger square, so that they can build more rooms without have to worry about putting floors. But um, uh, I kind of like to do this just because it's a bit neater, and uh, it doesn't, ha and the map doesn't have to load extra flooring that does that has no use. So, you know, if you're making a really big map, it's recommended you do it more accurately like this. But, I mean, if you're just getting started and you just want to test around a little, then, I mean, it's no big deal. So, um, either way, the player is not going to see any uh, inconsistencies with your map unless he actually looks into this file. Um, so, if you look in here, um, you can see our floors. The player can stand on this floor. And if he looks up, he can see the um, ceiling. That's the floorboard. So... Uh, there we go. We have a simple floor and we have a simple ceiling. And now we can start filling up the floor, or the the room with actual furniture like beds and couches and dressers and um, cabinets and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's going to come the next episode, not this episode. Actually, guys, I'd even show you guys how to save this. Um, uh, I said uh, I said bye too soon. Um, yeah, I didn't show you guys how to save this map. Um, so to save it, you go to File, and you go to Save As. And in Save As, you find where you have your um, your main uh, custom stories folder. So uh, that's going to be on my desktop. So that's going to be in C. Uh, users. Oops. Users. Uh, your name or whatever account you're using. And um, uh, desktop. And in desktop, you um, you find your folder, so that's going to be the wake. And in maps, you can go ahead and save your map, but you have to give it a name first. And I'm going to give it the name of um, 
let's see, uh, yeah, since this is going to be like kind of like a bedroom, or, uh, I'm going to call it starting room. And, uh, oh, as a matter of fact, it's named as room 01. I like that. Room 01. So, we're going to name it room 01, just because you, when you're looking through your script, you want to make sure that, I mean, when you're looking through the uh, maps, you want to make sure you know which map you're going to do and stuff like that. So, uh, room 01 sounds like a good room to start with, and we're going to go ahead and sa hit save file. And that's all it is to saving. Uh, sorry if I missed that. I'm going to try and uh, point that out so you guys don't uh, think that the episode is over, then I come back. So, um, yeah. Don't, uh, um, I'm going to let you guys know about that. So, um, thanks for watching. Uh, next episode explains um, some more stuff. So, look into that. And, yeah. Thanks for watching. See ya.